Excalibur number 17 follows up on the multiversal quasi-mystery of the missing Betsy Braddock, aka Captain Britain, with Betsy trapped on an Earth where she's Queen Elizabeth III, and the Krakoa Excalibur unit battling political forces of Britain and Coven Akaba as they try to find a way to bring Betsy back. Today I'll answer, what are the interesting aspects of Excalibur's exploration of the Marvel multiverse? What's the core problem I have with this ongoing in series? What should Excalibur become of the many options it seems to have before itself, and theories and predictions for things to come, both here in the Reign of X and across X-Men? Hey everybody, I'm Dave Busing, founder and editor-in-chief of ComicBookHerald.com. You're listening to Crack and Krakoa number 147. That's right, we're coming up on episode number number 150. There are four X-Men comics that were released today, so our numbering is going to get weird because I have a live stream planned for the first week of February that was meant to be like a 150th episode special, but now I have no idea what number it's actually going to be. Nonetheless, there will be a live stream plan. I'll share the details out here soon and in the show notes and all that fun stuff. If you like Comic Carol's YouTube channel and Crack and Krakow and you want to know about upcoming live streams and things that you can join and just what else I got going on, please consider liking, subscribing, and sharing, and of course, commenting here so I can hear your thoughts and help me out find new viewers. Spoilers for Discuss Comics will follow. Writer Teeny Howard, artist Marcus Toe, we open Excalibur 17 with our Captain Betsy in another reality where she's Queen Betsy with private fly-in lover by night Warren Worthington, of course reflecting the duo's own romance on Earth 616. Since the true queen bee of this realm is a Captain Britain, she's prepared for what to do in case she gets lost in the multiverse, and even has a playbook with writing from Prime Minister Pete Wisdom of that world. It's a cool multiversal exploration with a world where England is a mutant safe haven of sorts. The multiverse of Betsy Captain Britain continues to be the hook that I'm the most invested in, honestly by far, that I care about the most deeply. There's some cool stuff here. Howard and Toe do a good job building out details of this alternate Earth, integrating Quanan as her own character in a world where she and Betsy never swapped bodies, and where she's the ex-wife of Angel, right? She gets to have a lot more agency and kind of be her own character in this universe. Likewise, I enjoy the similarities and differences of this Earth's lighthouse, including the nice Excalibur Easter egg that director of this lighthouse is longtime Chris Claremont, Alan Davis, Excalibur player Alessandre Stewart. Moments like these had me thinking back to Excalibur's late 80s cross-time caper, which remains a classic storyline I enjoy conceptually, if not, you know, in reality, right? I find it actually pretty woefully bloated. We're reading it right now as part of the My Marvelous Year Reading Club. If you are interested in joining a Marvel reading club where we go through all of these classic storylines, we're actually just finishing up 1989 and heading into the 90s, which of course means 90s X-Men, baby. Hey, if you are interested in me doing like 90s X-Men specials as we read through in the My Marvel This Year Reading Club uh, here on Kraken Krakoa, let me know in the comments. If I get enough enthusiasm and voice around it, I might just convince myself to make some more videos. Uh, nonetheless, here, getting back to Excalibur, I'd actually really like to see Teeny Howard's take on like a cross-time caper type story through the multiverse. That has a lot of potential for me. I want to see Betsy hopping different multiverses and getting new different ideas like this. I do also like the multiversal implications of Betsy Braddock's first question to Quanon as to to whether there's a Krakoa. Betsy's basically like, can I ask you three questions? Quinnon's like, no. Betsy's like, cool, here's question number one. This is kind of a recurring theme with them. This to me is a super cool angle, potentially, right? Like, is Betsy scoping out the potential for Krakoa mutant havens across the multiverse? Could she corral the Captain Britain Corps to make this happen? Remember, like, Betsy Braddock has a ton, a ton of importance right now post Ten of Swords, okay? One of the big outcomes post Ten of Swords was the Captain Britain Corps gets reestablished. It had been totally decimated after 2015 Secret Wars, and it gets reestablished not only, you know, instead of it being a bunch of Brian Braddock's crawled through multiverse, it's now Betsy Braddock's, but it's a mutant Captain Britain Corps, okay? This is something that Betsy now has, and she has leverage and kind of potential power over. I'd love to see this explored. I'd love to see how if they were like, okay, we need to get a Krakoa in every multiverse. Now, a question here, like, with this reality would be, is the Krakoan equivalent of this multiverse England, right? With Queen Queen Betsy, with Prime Minister Pete Winsdom, like, is that already a sort of Krakoan equivalent? Maybe it doesn't literally need to be an island of Krakoa across the multiverse, but this is an idea that I would love to see, um, you know, explored and expanded. I will say, though, in terms of, like, dynamics between Betsy and Quanon, obviously, like, ha these two, so in, in Earth 616, Quanon is the ninja assassin that Betsy swaps 
bodies with in the pages of Uncanny X-Men. It's during the Acts of Vengeance against, uh, event. Now, again, to plug the My Marvel This Year Club, we were literally just approaching this as we get into, like, 1990s. So, again, if you want to read all these issues, come check it out. Um, but, like, so they so Betsy essentially, like, takes over Quinnon's body, right? There's a whole long, detailed thing. We've talked about it a lot in past Crack and Krakoa's, but it's a really complicated, um, pretty loaded backstory and kind of shared history that these characters share. But nonetheless, in this alternate Earth, they don't actually share that history, right? It's something that Betsy has experienced, but it's not something that Quinnon has actually experienced until she finally is like, okay, I'm re- going to read your mind here, Betsy, and uh, and figure out what you've done, because Betsy basically forces her to know. Now, I imagine this is partially intentional, as this is guilt Betsy Braddock really doesn't understand how to process or how to deal with, you know, since Quinnon on Earth 616, uh, like, you know, won't talk to her, and why would she, right? And so she forces this trial run practice on an alternate version and manages it atrociously. Like, Betsy comes across here to me as a real jerk, honestly. Like, she's forcing an apology on this Quinnon who repeatedly tells her, do not tell me this stuff. I'm not supposed to know the details just, like, procedurally, and I don't want to and Betsy just has to do it like she cannot stop herself um which is interesting right it's like it's it's intentionally I think showing this character just like cannot stop herself from doing this thing even though it's clearly not what the other person wants now ultimately the issue ends with Betsy appearing to pop back up outside the Excalibur lighthouse and initially I was really bummed out here um by this like it felt like okay cool we're gonna do this multiverse hopping story and oh that's it like and, and she's back already one multiverse and we're done but this Betsy Braddock is wearing a different outfit than the one we see our Betsy in before she wanders through the portal, implying to me this could well be our missing real Queen Betsy, and that Captain Betsy is instead setting off on another multiverse adventure, which honestly saves a lot of the criticism I had for the issue. Like, if this was gonna be one multiverse and then Betsy's back, I'm deeply, deeply unhappy with the story direction, but as it stands, uh, I'm a lot more intrigued. I actually think that's a pretty good save, even if, again, like, like, that's a fairly small detail. Like that's kind of it was not something I picked up on a first read, and really only putting this together as I was kind of writing the criticism. I was like, oh, wait a minute, she has long sleeves here, and she didn't previously. That that matters. Now the biggest problem I continue to have with Excalibur, right, is I'm just fully out on the core team, like Rogue, Gambit, Richter, Jubilee literally anything they're involved in, I've just completely lost interest. They don't do anything. (laughs) They went from puppets of apocalypse to kind of just wandering around aimlessly. They have like a sorcerer's battle here with Kova Nakaba for some reason over the the battle for the, you know, the original Excalibur lighthouse. Like, I just don't, I I have no interest in what's happening with them, Um, which like isn't to say I don't like these characters, you know, like I talked, I actually just had an interview with uh, Royer Kelly Thompson, and in in prepping for that, I reread uh, Mr. and Mrs. X and her Rogue and Gambit series. These are not characters that are like favorites of mine, but those series are awesome, right? I think in the right hands, those characters can be really, really fun. I liked Richter a lot, actually, kind of as a you know, co-chair of the Apocalypse Committee, right? Like running running Apocalypse those plants. I thought he was pretty interesting. But now I'm just like, what 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 are they doing? Like what's what is this team? What are they supposed to be? Because right now to me, Excalibur, like as a Captain Britain book, as a Betsy book, I'm interested. Everything else, I, I don't know. Do we need him here? I don't understand it. And that kind of brings to me like what is this book want to be you know i mean since new mutants got good per vita Ayala and rod rice who they have another issue out number 15 today and it's it's quite good um excalibur's my least favorite series now i will say like as i'm talking about here obviously there's plenty to talk about you know and there's stuff i continue to be interested in but of the x books it's the one i'm the least into so it goes right somebody's got to be in that position there aren't there aren't any at this point that i'm like this is terrible you know like we're, we're well past fallen angels rage <laughs> okay so but the thing for excalibur that i really want to see is like pick a lane You know, is this a multiverse classic Excalibur Captain Betsy core book? Is it a politics of British mutant Captain Britain book? Is it a sorcery with Coven Akaba, but now no apocalypse book? Like what what exactly do we want to be? Because I think all of those things is mudding the waters. Additionally, in the absence of Apocalypse, you know, post Ten of Swords, what do we make of his schemes? You know, Apocalypse was scheming throughout Excalibur, and so much of that was building to get us to the point where Ten of Swords worked and made sense. And I think as a prelude, it actually functions a lot better than it did maybe on its own terms, right? Like it's clear. Excalibur was building two Ten of Swords and then delivered a really cool Ten of Swords story. And I think Tinny Howard probably doesn't get enough credit for being a part of Ten of Swords. You know, everybody, for good and for ill, when stuff is good, they say, oh, the Hickman's X-Men. When it's bad, they say, Hickman's X-Men, right? But like Tinny Howard, I think she was co-writer on the book. Doesn't get a lot of credit there. Plus two, just like some of the threads, like is Morgan Le Fay, she gets brought up here. 
okay, the sorceress we saw in very early Excalibur issues. Is she still just like hanging out on an operation table? <laughs> like, like where's Morgan Le Fay? What is Jamie Braddock doing that Apocalypse had planned for him? Like, there's a lot of lingering there that I'm curious about. Like, what what did Apocalypse leave behind for this Excalibur unit? I think there's a flashback issue here that could be very interesting in terms of detailing, like, what can happen now that Betsy has cracked the multiverse with Apocalypse's plans? Because there are some lingering threats here that I feel like we have not gotten nearly enough information on. So, I mean, so far in Excalibur, there have been two really core-focused alternate reality Betsy issues. Um, there was, I, I forget which number, but pre-10 swords. It might have been 9 or 10. Um, and then this one, right, Excalibur 17. And both, I would say, are some of the strongest in Excalibur. I really like when Howard and Toe take on, like, hey, let's do an alternate reality. Let's play with that. Uh, the first was like a Jamie kind of based one and this next one is just you know betsy hop in the multiverse i really hope that teeny howard and marcus toe continue to lean in i think excalibur's best bet is again really leaning into what does it mean to have a mutant captain britain what does it mean to have betsy braddock in this role and what does it mean to have her exploring the multiverse because that brings up a lot of really interesting questions about mutant presence in the multiverse. What does that matter for Cohen plans? It ties into the big picture in some really fun and interesting ways. Again, though, it's like when we hop back to 616 and it's just this kind of like, why is this a team Rogue Gambit Jubilee Richter thing battling, uh, you know, with druids and, and sorcerers? I'm just like, what? Why? <laughs> like, what are we what are we getting out of this? It's not interesting to me at all. Um, so I'm curious how those threads will come together. The Crit Cohen for the next issue reads, who's there? Uh, it sounds like a potential, I don't know, a really good knock knock joke potentially coming. Um, I'm guessing that's a reference to. Uh, who's there, like, who's in this body, who's in this Betsy body, because, again, I think the very, maybe it's not as subtle as I'm portraying it, but just I'm reading fast sometimes, and uh, that did not appear to be the same Betsy. So let me know. What are your theories? What are your comments? What do you think about Excalibur? What do you think about what I've said about it here? Uh, let me hear them in the comments on this video. I would love to know what you think. Thanks to everybody who supports Comic Book Herald on Patreon.com slash Comic Book Herald. It is all greatly, greatly appreciated. Thank you in particular to the Mysterious Benefactors tier over on Patreon. These are supporters who are supporting at the $10 a month level. Extremely generous. And you get your name included here on the videos for as little as $1 a month over on Patreon.com. You can get uh, access to all of my X-Men reviews in podcast form via an exclusive Patreon feed. That is where I post those in addition to other benefits and like priority access to reading orders and questions and uh, other fun stuff I'm doing over on Comic Book Herald. So thanks everybody for listening. Again, I'm Dave. You can find my stuff at comicbookherald.com. You can find all of our excellent writers over at comicbookherald.com. Seriously, 2021, I have more than doubled the amount of amazing critics and editors that I've got working on the site and uh, our content has absolutely never been better. There's some great reading over there. Check it out if you haven't. You can find me at Comic Book Herald pretty much anywhere on social. Look for the best comics ever in my Marvelous Year podcast for more from me and Again, remember, do you want a 90s X-Men Reading Club exclusive content here on Crack and Krakoa? Let me know if you're interested, and, uh, and we'll see what I can do as we head there on the MMY Club. So thanks, everybody, for listening, and as always, enjoy the comics.